Good morning, everyone. Um, certainly, the the men's club has become an important part of my operations as youth director, youth director here at Betsedek. This morning, I, I want to reminisce a little bit in my own life, but I want to talk just quickly about the idea of scholarship, of what it means to be a scholar. I learned that lesson very, uh, probably later than I should have, and it, and it came with a lot of hard work. Uh, when I was a student at the University of Judaism in Los Angeles, I had a professor uh, by the name of Dr. Zioni Zevit. Dr. Zioni Zevit is one of the world's most prominent biblical archaeologists. This man is fluent in six dead Semitic languages. He speaks seven other languages. Um, he uh, has a, a knowledge of Bible that I, 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 you know, what he knows on, his, on the tip of his tiny pinky uh, is more than probably any student he's ever taught. I had the, I don't know whether or not, the privilege of having a course with him one-on-one -on -one where, and, and Dr. Zevit comes with a reputation. There are rabbinic students at the University of Judaism who refuse to take his classes. And there are undergrads who definitely for sure refuse to take his classes because he's a very tough grader. He's the type of professor that will lecture for 20 weeks hand you a description of what he wants you to write on your research paper, will tell you to write 30 pages in four days, and whatever you get on that paper is the grade of your class, the grade that you'll receive in the class. So there are, few, there are very few people who are willing to, to undergo that amount of pressure. But in one year, having a class on early profits with him, one-on-one -on -one was a unique experience where I learned what it meant to really be a scholar. He, one morning he, he was running, uh, he had, he had a, an appointment that he had to do. We normally had class at 9.30 in the morning. And he calls up to my dorm room at 8 a.m. And I'm asleep, certainly asleep. And he says to me, I have an appointment at 9.30. We need to meet at 8.30, be downstairs in my classroom by then, we need to learn. So in a panic, I get ready. I rush downstairs. And I make it about with about 30 seconds to go. And he sits down. And he was the type of person that really never really engaged with his students. He would just lecture, put his notes down, and leave the class. He looked me straight in the eye that morning and he said, the difference between being a student and being a scholar is that a student is always absorbing information. They just take it in and they store it. And then at some point when they're called upon to regurgitate it, they do. But a scholar takes in information, stores it, creates an opinion, creates a thought, and then when asked to regurgitate that information, presents not only the information but their thoughts on it too. And he said the real difference is, is that a true scholar thinks that their opinions count, whereas a student will always look for approval on their opinions. Now at 8.30 in the morning, with no coffee, I'm still, try, you know, I'm still trying to take in what he says. But he goes on to use something from Pirkei Avot to explain his point. Pirkei Avot, it says, anyone whose deeds exceed their wisdom their wisdom will endure and counter anyone whose wisdom exceeds their deeds, their wisdom will not endure. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, what is wisdom and what are these deeds? Now wisdom can come in many different forms. We acquire knowledge in several different ways. 
We acquire book knowledge. We acquire knowledge by listening to those around us and absorbing knowledge through them. And then, of course, we, have, we gain knowledge by the experiences in our lives. And then what do we mean by deeds? Well, deeds come in many forms as well. When we take in knowledge, when we take in learning, we could either decide to be the student and store it, or we can decide to be a scholar and form our opinion, but the second part of that is also doing the deed. The deeds in what I call, you know, there, there's a book, you know, um, All I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. There's that book, at, you know, where the beginning of the book says, you know, I thought that the uh, that the height of wisdom was climbing to the mountaintop, uh, you know, uh, was climbing to the graduate school mountaintop. But what I really needed to learn about how to be and what to do and, and all that I'll ever need in life, I learned in the sandbox. Well, that, that is partly true and partly not true when we're c trying to determine what these deeds are. In meeting with our teen advisory committee the other day, on, on Tuesday, I, I really gained to understand what those deeds are. On Tuesday, we have a, a teen advisory committee of 10 kids where they come up and with programming uh, for their peers. It's, mo it's all high schoolers, 10 high schoolers. And they were sitting with one of our Israeli young emissaries who are here for the year, uh, one of our 18-year-old uh, Israeli young emissaries, Gal Perlman, and he was talking about and showing them the video of the flotilla siege and going over information, what information is coming out in the Israeli press, what information is coming out in the world press, and you should have seen the look in, these, in the eyes of these kids. The very first question, after all this information that they absorbed, their very first question was, what can we do? And I was blown away by this. All of them were trying to come up with ways to figure out, one, how to spread the right information about what was going on, and two, what could they physically do for Israel, whether it be changing, I can't, I can't tell you how many times on my BlackBerry this week I've gotten from the kids on the Teen Advisory Committee a notice via BBM to change your profile picture on your BBM to a flag for, for Israel. They did, they started they, uh, a campaign with their friends, where all their friends uh, changed their profile pictures to show their support for the state of Israel. It wasn't just the fact that they took in this information. They took it in, they processed it, they formed their own opinions, and they did something about it. Dr. Zevit always asked me as a student, and I ask all of you, adult, teen, child, even myself, knowledge is one thing. Knowledge can be taken in as a student, and you can just take it in, store it, and when asked to regurgitate it, you can. But true scholarship, being a true scholar, means taking in all the information that you can in the world, and then ultimately making a decision to do something about it. Whether it be Jewish education, we can't just take it in. We have to decide ultimately that when we learn the, the, the rules and the lessons of the Torah, the Tanakh, the Talmud, the commentators, that they cannot just be an intellectual exercise, but they have to be set to deeds. Knowledge needs to be set to action with that action comes true scholarship, and with that, that knowledge will endure from generation to generation to generation. A call to action to all of you, and also a congratulations to all of our award winners this morning.
Thank you for your time. Thank you.